every single thing we do is trained the same way. It is all trick training. So whether I'm teaching a sit stay, a down stay, a retrieve, running contacts, in agility, everything is a trick. So when I'm sharing the guidelines for really good trick training, I'm sharing also the guidelines for really, really good dog training. You've got to go into training with a light heart, keeping in mind the number one kind of guideline that guides all of the training that we do here, and that is that our dogs are always doing the best they can with the education we've given them and the environment we put them in. So if I'm teaching anything, we're going in lighthearted because we're going to educate. I've got five guidelines for teaching tricks, but you know, five guidelines for teaching anything. Number one, cut up your treats ahead of time. You don't want to be in the midst of training your dog and breaking up the cookies. Guideline number one, cut up those treats. Guideline number two, and this is cheating because I put a few things in number two, is, and pay close attention to this one. I feel this is one of the big reasons why some people fail with their training. I'll give you an example. A few months ago, we hosted this big Zoom class. It was a part of our opening of Doggy Flix. And so I help people train their dogs. And any of the people that had problems were breaking this rule number two. Rule number two is set the environment for success. So what is an environment of success? First of all, if you have more than one dog or if you have a cat that likes to get in on your training, those animals are out of the room. So they are in another location. Or what I do is my dogs, if I tell them to hop it up in a bed, they'll stay there while I train another dog. So if you've got really well-trained dogs, then you can hop them up in a bed. Otherwise, either in a kennel or X-Pen or somewhere in another room. So that way you can focus on the dog and the dog doesn't have to worry about what this other animal is doing. Number two, create an environment for success, which means number part A of 2A, only one dog in the room, put the other dogs away. 2B means it's a small environment. So either you're using a baby gate or X pens or go into a small room. If you have a small bedroom or even if you don't have a small room, then Put your dog on a leash, okay? Because that way they're not going to be distracted by, oh, look, there's some fluff in the corner. Now, ideally, you're going to be engaging enough that that's not going to be a problem. The last thing you're going to do is you're going to get your own dog to train. So number three, have your props ready and in an appropriate location. The very last thing you're going to do is you're going to get your dog. Don't do it now because I got to tell you what we're going to train. And then that's step number four, get the dog. Step number five is you do a one-minute evaluation. This is really, really good for whatever you're shaping. If you're shaping a behavior that, you know, it's important to you, you're shaping a trick, you're shaping obedience behaviors, one minute evaluation the first time out is a really good thing to do. So have a timer. I always set a timer for one minute. If you're like me, most of the time, by 20 seconds, I'm abandoning my evaluation because I know what I need to change. So the one minute evaluation is, are you able to hold your props? Are you able to get your reinforcement out fast enough? Is the target big enough? Is it just like snowballing out of control? Stop, stop the train, get off the train, sit down and think, give the dog some cookies, end your session. Your one minute evaluation sometimes is, well, that was one minute, it was aces. I'll take some notes and I'll go back and I'll do another session because that one was great. Those are my five guidelines. If you listen to the podcast Shape by Dog, then you know that I have a lot of other tips for successful training sessions. But those are the five just easy things that you can have success. <music>